welcome back to episode two of the Social Day Show. This week we're featuring Cheryl Douglas as our big interview as Cision talk us through their state of the media survey. Lucy's out on her travels and she gets another amazing tool of the week for us to share with you. And we also play What the Fudge Is That? with Marcus Wilson, content ace from Jungle Creations. Enjoy the show. Okay. okay, before you start there, Lucy, I'm crouching and you're holding the phone really high up, aren't you? So we're both in the same shot. But, okay. okay, so I'm here with Danny Windsor and he's going to give us his favourite talk. Wait, first of all, Danny, where are you from? What do you do? I'm from Secret Joy Media. I am the brand and marketing manager for SGM. And Danny, what is your favourite social media content tool and why? I think Answer the Public is a really cool tool. So it enables you to search for one keyword and then it pulls out all of the questions that people are asking online. Oh, really good for blogs, really good for content. Yeah. Will that do? I've never heard of that. That's a really Answer good... Answer the Public. Yeah, okay. Answer the Public. Dot com. Thank you, Danny. You're welcome. Hey guys, we're back in London. We're here to see Cision, and we're here to talk about the latest research that they've done. Cision used to be known as Gorkana. They're a massive PR network. They've also branched out into um, earned, earned media analysis and influencer marketing. Uh, so it'd be really interesting to, to get their views on um, what journalists are currently thinking about social media, uh, specifically fake news and specifically um, accuracy of content. <laughs> Welcome, I'm with Cheryl Douglas from Cision. Welcome Hello. Cheryl, thanks for having us in and spectacular view behind us. Yeah, the show is a little bit great. Yeah. So Sh Cheryl, can you tell us a bit about your role here at Cision and what Cision do? Well, Cision is a leading global provider of earned media software. I mean, that's a very high level. Uh, but in essence, we help marketeers, PR professionals connect and identify um, influence journalist media and track their, uh, engage with them, track their campaigns and measure the impact of that. Um, for me, uh, I've been in the media industry for 28 years, just over, and it's been so exciting from day one at the age of 19 arrived, arriving at um, the Sunday Times, seeing how the media has just evolved to today, 2018. Yeah. It's just been a, an exciting, ever-changing landscape and it's something that I'm passionate about. Um, with Decision, I've been here nearly 10 years. I'm Global Director of uh, Media Research and Gulkana Jobs. So my team and I are working and talking and visiting um, journalists and media uh, organisations day in, day out. They certainly keep us on our toes. Yeah, I bet they do, yeah. But they also keep Decision on his toes and keep us current. And uh, it used to be called Gulkana, didn't you? We did, yeah, and I started when I used to use you. Yeah, yeah. I started with Gulkana. Yeah, so, um, and then Cision um, acquired us and now we're into this much larger family um, which is working incredibly well. So you also now started to look at influencer outreach you've seen and um, analysis more of um, earned media? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's a space that we are very much um, occupying. So now you've just, um, um, well, fairly recently just produced the, um, the big report. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sending that through. Um, the reason this is of interest to us is that obviously that journalists are some of the, the best storytellers out there, mm -hmm. uh, some of the best uh, creators of original content. And you know, what did the survey tell you about the challenges that they've seen over the last 12 months? Well, one of the main ones, one of the main challenges is exactly the same as last year. Last year it was at 91%, this year it's at 71% and it's about public trust. Um, and it's about trusting the content that's put in, put in front of them. So fake news is playing a huge part of that. It certainly doesn't help when we've got uh, certain political leaders, um, <laughs> uh, especially like this week, uh, what's going on over here and across the pond as well. So that doesn't help because it reinforces that it's okay to read fake news. Um, yeah. And it, that doesn't help the media industry uh, on that. I think other areas and challenges for the media and journalists are a couple of things. 
um, that came out in the survey, social media algorithms, you know, they're constantly changing and how they keep up to date yeah. with those. Um, another one are new devices coming on the scene, such as Alexa, Google Home, and how consumers will you know, get their news from different, uh, different, different ways uh, on there. So I think they're a couple of the, the main things that have come out of the, of the report. And one of you, you just picked up on it there, the, I think it was 26% of journalists said that the algorithm changes were a big issue for them. Yeah. Um, a lot of new publishers focus on um, digital content, and we talked offline about junk creations and the hook, and you know how they tend to ebb and flow a bit more with uh, algorithm changes, and mm -hmm. I guess they don't have much choice, it's, that's the plat platform of choice. So, you know, do you think that um, traditional media outlets may need more education in this area? What's, what's, the, what's well, the answer for them? Um, well, it's a really tough one because, it, as you just highlighted, it is ever evolving and changing. I think for the new kids on the block, the new video and the publishers, etc., they they know they're immersed in it. They're doing it day in, day out, um, so they can react very quickly yeah. to changes um, and get the news. Whether they're working with a brand. PR or their own content, they can adapt and amend that as they see fit in accordance with the channel they're working on. Traditional media is kind of bypassed them um, by. They take a story and they've got to disseminate it through a much wider social media channel. So it's it's tough for them. But they are coming on the journey. Um, I think the downside for them is is trying to keep up with the changes with the algorithms. On there, and I think that's something an area that, that obviously traditional media really needs to work on. Do, do you think maybe traditional media also needs to maybe put a bit of money behind some of their own content on these channels? I mean, I can guess there's a massive reluctance to do so, um, but yeah. I, but if you think about Daily Telegraph, for example, they've got a huge they they've got a huge technology. Um, they've invested heavily in technology journalists, etc., um, and they're very much moving to content driven as. Um, as the other nationals are, but yeah, it, it is about money, and will they make money from this? Yeah, I did. Also, I did see one of your other um, um, top line points on the on the survey. Eighty one percent of journalists say ensuring content um, being one hundred percent correct is paramount. I mean, first off, where are the other, what are the other nineteen percent thinking? Well, <laughs> they they also said about you know should their story go first, should it go on social yeah. media, etc. And um, it's interesting, at that survey, 10% actually said yes, their story should be first on social media. Actually, the rest were like, no, it's about the accuracy, and it comes back down to that 81%. It's about the accuracy of being 100% um, accurate with the data um, they receive. I think also, you know, the story, wherever they, a consumer may read it, it's really important to recognise that we're in an age now where it's no longer generational, where I'm not going to pick up the paper because my mum and dad did. It's about your mainstay, whether it's your um, a national, your regional, your favourite blog, your favourite broadcaster. It's you're going to go to your trusted source on a regular basis in order to get the news that you want, that you trust. Um, and that's why it's so important that when working with PRs and brands, etc., that the data that you provide to a media organisation, a journalist, is factually correct. It has everything there that they need in terms of being able to quantify that story yeah. uh, on there. That's so important. I think um, the, the, one of the two good things that came out of the survey was 44% of journalists uh, said that they still they, they still rely on PRs for their content, and 63% that um, content from brands and press releases were the most valuable content. But it all comes full circle. It has to be correct and it has to be factual. It's, it's interesting that um, you know that, that getting it right is, is, is the most important thing to a journalist, and you know, obviously probably the editor uh, and then the team. But what happens in you know um, what do you think we can do to combat when a story goes out and becomes viral, and it's not necessarily um, the most accurate? Of, of I think it depends on the story, and it depends on the subject matter. There are some if it, if it's about a brand, for example, some brands are very good at turning that. Yeah. that crisis into a positive and then getting traction on that. Some brands will just need to step back, or some stories is a case of just stepping back. But there are some cases where the media will need to own up and say, um, you know, we got it wrong and here's the, uh, here's the actual facts. Some of the, it, 
you've got to be transparent in all of it. And like I said at the beginning, it does depend on what the story's about yeah. in terms of whether you're going to touch it and go with it, or you're going to just, 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 take, just take it to step back. Very interesting thing to take a step back. We were, we were discussing um, Elon Musk um, and, you know, how it's too easy for, for some people just to jump on in yeah, the heat of moments. Twitter. Yeah, and, you know, now he's got a PR that backlash to base. But he hasn't said anything, has he? He's kept quiet. Yeah. So that's a case of whether he's sitting back thinking, you know, I'm going to just let this run out of steam. Just let it die down. Yeah. So how do, how do you think journalists are embracing new technology and social media? Uh, I mean, I remember being a publisher and, God, it was difficult to get them to, to push their own stories out. Uh, if they, you know, there seems to be a lot more... Well, there's, there's, a, there's a number of things. I mean, you might remember this, I'm not sure, but back in the day when journalists didn't have that interaction, um, and I was at the times when we went online um, for the first time and trying to get certain journalists, not going to mention names, to actually come on. There's a comment section, interact, they wouldn't do it. But that changed, and you're seeing yeah. that now. And journalists are embracing that. They're embracing the applications and the devices that are out there. So you can see them every day. Certain journalists are brilliant on Twitter, and they're embracing that in terms of this is my story, whether it's a story they've created or they've had help from PRs and marketeers, etc. And it's going out for Twitter, and they're embracing that in terms of also the earned space. You know, who else is reading that? Who else is um, sharing that? And the important thing for that is if they can bring the brands or, or the PR on the journey with them and, and reach a whole new audience. I think other areas um, of technology that they, they can embrace, uh, I think it was 26% on our survey that said about AI um, from the back end and about how they can um, an analyze their content yeah. and their, um, the trends of stories, which really helps to find an outlet uh, publication um, in terms of what's working for them and what isn't working for them. And I think the last one that really stood out for me was um, video technology. Uh, that was a really interesting one in terms of, if you take drones for example, and how instant a drone story can become. On Sunday, I never once did, and on Sunday there was a huge grass fire. The flames are 20 foot high. Yeah. And I could smell the smoke from where I was. I immediately went onto Twitter and went, oh my God, what's happening? I could see the police helicopter. I would say within about 25 to 30 minutes, there was a drone up there showing, and it was, I can't remember if it was firefighting service or, or the police that put the drone up. And then that was being fed to news agencies, regionals, BBC, the Evening Standard has it. And that was great because it just shows that the media just aren't thinking about their own ways to do stories, but what's actually happening around them. And I thought the drone was a really good example of instant news, it's happening, and then taking that on board and then creating their own stories around that. Yeah, and you know, I mean, you kind of see the BBC and ITV, Sky, I guess, to, to a similar extent, um, with, you know, breaking news stories, yeah. putting in that um, user generated content. Yeah, exactly. Even from the local citizens, yeah. they were tweeting saying, has anybody got any good photos um, on there? So, you know, some journalists are fans of that, some journalists aren't, but for certain stories it works. And what I'm, I'm, you, know, you talk about um, Amazon and um, Alexa and the, the, the AI, are you starting to see um, journalists create content specifically for these channels now? Are they starting to think about that? Are they adopting it? I, on the survey, it came out as midterm. They didn't see it as an immediate. Um, there was, there's two areas. They didn't see it as an immediate threat, but they also saw it as an opportunity yeah. uh, on there. Um, so I think short term, probably not. But for me personally, if I was um, working for the, the media organisations, I would start thinking about it now. I mean, if you think about Alexa, Google Home, um, and all the other devices out there that you can consume your news on, you have to start thinking about the content yeah. that you're pushing through on there. And it's not just from an organ a media point of view, it's brands and the uh, marketeers uh, and the PRs that work with the media in terms of, if you're going to supply that content, you need to think about what other channels that organisation is going to offer you and help them with that journey, help them get that content out there, because you'll have far more luck um, getting that story published yeah. if you could help the whole package rather than just, just one element. One element yeah. I think the other area is, you know, consumers are so time poor, 
um, Facebook launched, I, I can't remember when they launched it, but on articles now you can see the timing. Yeah. Um, so if you think about today's world where people on a Sunday might still sit down with, with their paper, but going back to content is with Facebook, if you're busy, are you going to read it where it says this is going to be a long article? No, you're not, you're just going to swipe. So it's about thinking, recognizing that your content has to be um, easily read for that device. For Alexa, how is it going to pick up that content to ensure it's put in front of the consumer? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just using the Alexa example. There's, there's many more out there. We've, we've also seen like the, you know, the rise of podcasts, you know, they sort of came out, yeah. spiked, disappeared, but now they're quite, you know, um, they're quite popular because I think people, you know, on the tube, headphones in, yeah, so I, how we commute and in the car. I remember being at the papers and podcasts was huge and we started building these little studios and it was all little, this new technology. Follow me, something else came in. Yeah. But like you said, things do tend to go full circle, but then they evolve yeah. with that and the content um, improves is probably not the right word, but the content um, evolves with it. Yeah. I suppose it evolves with the audience, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, and Instagram have just launched, well, recently launched the new long form video content platform, which I think is going to be a great opportunity for, for, for publishers down the road. Yeah, and it's interesting how journalists will interact with those. I interviewed a uh, CNN tech journalist recently, and he was using Snapchat. Yeah, we had him at Social Day. Ah, oh, you know who I'm talking about. I do, yeah. yeah. Um, and he tried Snapchat for stories and pictures, and you know, he said it was a hit and miss. But it's interesting how. Um, journalists are now looking at different platforms in order to engage with their stories, not just about pushing their stories out, but how they get them as well. There's another really famous tech journalist, and I'm certainly not going to mention his name, he would only engage with you on Twitter. Right. Um, and if you couldn't tell the story, I think back then it was what, 140 characters, 140 characters? If you couldn't, if you couldn't pitch, to him, pitch to him in that, then it wasn't worth knowing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, it's just all these, you know, it's goes right back to the beginning of the interview that it's evolved beyond recognition from when I first joined the media world. But today's just as exciting with all the new applications and devices coming up and how to keep somebody engaged. And out on the survey, the State of the Media survey that Cision produced, that's very clear on the technology challenges yeah. um, part of the survey and also embracing those, those challenges and how you can turn those around. And uh, you know, do you think that journalists are now starting to see um, even more career opportunity through them becoming influencers in their own right? I mean, you'll see the political field, you see specialist tech, as you've mentioned. That's a really good question, and I think it's one that, um, depending on which journalists you speak to, I would dream of calling certain sectors influencers because they will very clearly say to you, I'm a reporter, yeah. etc. So it's a very much individual thing. Um, but yes, there are more journalists coming up that they now see that they are um, not just reporting on the news or a story, whether it's entertainment, business, etc. Yeah. It's, it's about to a wider audience and it goes back to that engagement with they can either do it through Twitter, through you know, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, so yes, I think certain, certain journalists, and I think it's becoming more popular, um, but I think we're a long, long way off from all journalists, if ever saying, classing themselves as influencers. Well, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us today. That's okay. My pleasure. Thank you. We're not going to tell you. Okay. I thought you were Yeah. So you thought you were finished, um, mm. but you're not, I'm afraid. So, sure stuff. It's enough, I reckon. Uh, Henry's just smashed it. Oh, I can't tell you his score, but he's absolutely it. smashed it. So, you know, the benchmark's pretty high, um, you know, so I'm, gonna ask, I'm basically going to describe um, some brands and some products, mm -hmm. and from my brilliant descriptions, you're going to have to guess what they are. Sure. Um, so you've got three minutes on the clock. Um, we can fix that. <laughs> you know, when you're ready. Let's do it. Okay. So, it is a cafe. Um, it is an American cafe. They have lots of Starbucks. musical instruments and memorabilia. Uh, hard rock. Got it. So this is an animal charity. Um, they go and rescue cats, dogs, um, wildlife that's in trouble. Wildlife. 
Um, RSPCA. Got, got it. Cool. It is a bank. Um, it, it's a high street bank. They have like an eagle as a logo. Um, um, it's like a blue logo. Uh, gosh, I should definitely know that. Um, Barclays. Yeah, yeah, Barclays. Oh. Got it. So what? this is a coffee um, chain. Uh, they're high streets, they serve everywhere, even petrol stations. Ah, uh, correct. Costa. Costa, yeah. So this is a, it's probably the doll that started all dolls. Um, Barbie. Got it. So you should know this, it's a type of ice cream. Um, oh. It's the stuff that you get from an ice cream van. Um, walls, uh, uh, Mr. Whippy. Got it. Fast. So this is a fizzy orange drink. Um, uh, Fanta. No. Um, it's, um, they had a ad campaign back in the nineties where they used to go and slap people around the face. Uh, what? <laughs> Check it out. Like... Hello, Johnny. I think we might use a video replay here. Super, Ralph. Let's do that. Oh, yes, we could be in for a quintessential Chango Tis sensation here. Why, yes, Tony, let's look again. Yes, Ralph, the big orange fellow running from the left, and he gives him a good old slapping. It just illustrates the bite and buzz. Oh, a real orange is in Chango. Yes, Ralph, super taste sensation, smashing drink, lovely. You know where you've been tangoed. <laughs> Check it out. Um, um, orange fizzy drink. Sunny D, uh, that's not Philly. Like you want to um, cross it? Yeah, please. Okay, so this is a chocolate bar, it's for men. For men, Snickers, Yorkie. 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 Uh, this is a fruit, um, a curved yellow fruit. Banana. Um, this is a, a yeah. <laughs> this is a uh, chain that do bikes. They do car spare car parts. I think they've even been known to do camping things. You often find them in out of town retail parks. Foxes, um, mountain. So they're more on the car parts side of things. Um, car parts. You can pass okay. that, yeah. Uh, this is a supermarket. It is um, for middle class shoppers. Um, Waitrose, not Sainsbury's. Wait Sainsbury's. Um, this is a product that you would use to um, not make your hair wet. Uh, dry shampoo. No, no. It's, uh, it's, you plug it into the mains and hot air comes out of it. Hair dryer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a game um, where you have coloured counters and you need to get four in a row. Uh, count four. You've got, got to... Uh, we're out. God, so many of those, definitely. So we should have known. We're not, going to tell, we're not going to tell you scores, you have to wait until the episode to, to see. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, but well done, I think that's a good effort. It's, sure. strong, it's definitely a strong effort. Thank you, yeah. Well, that's all for this week. I've been Tiny, and you've been great. See you next week.